Let's look at one of our more extreme examples of someone so-called laying the club down. So I stopped this golfer at this point in the avatar so you get an idea of what it looks like visually from looking down the line, the kinematics of where the club head is, the shaft, the hands, so far and so forth. So I'm going to get rid of that now. So here's the actual analysis that we have. Same golfer. So you can see at the top of the swing when the hands, we call the top of the swing when the hands reach their highest point, top of the backswing. Since it's called the top, we thought that was a pretty good place to call uh, the actual point, when the hands reach the highest point. And then you could see the hands start to move down. And you could see that the club head and the hands are at a plane at the top of the backswing. And then you could see as it comes around, they become more in plane. So this golfer actually had the club more laid back to start with. So this is a golfer who did it more to start with. And this is our biggest lay down that we have, uh, that I've captured to date. So as we watch this come around, what we're looking at here is green is the club head, blue are the shafts, red is the hub path, the points of the hub path, and black is the actual linear force applied to the grip point. And those are the quivers, and from those quivers we're able to see direction and also magnitude of the linear force applied to the grip point. So you could see early on in the downswing where the club is because the relative angle between the club head and the hands was more extreme on this particular golfer than we would see some other times. You could see the direction of the force and how it's working uh, with the club or against the club, whatever you wanted to call it. And then you could see how it would come around. And as I spin this around, you could start to see how the force, the linear force applied to the grip point, starts to grow in magnitude and starts to come around. And at any particular point, if you wanted to make a plane out of it or see you know, where the force is in relation to the club or where the center of mass would be, is you would just pick a spot on the hub path. So let's pick uh, down here. Let's pick the one down here. So right where I have this uh, cursor, you'll see here's the quiver. So there's the quiver of the force, the linear force applied to the grip point. There's a spot on the hub path where that is. We follow the shaft up to the club head. So now we can create and see if they're in the same plane, at a plane, and things of that nature. And one of the things that we've seen show up a lot, I'm just going to move this around. Let me just move this around for everybody. One of the things that I've seen show up a lot in the captures is the notion that at this point in the downswing, or if, let's say, this was the club was closer to the path of the hands, let's say, angle-wise, that there should be some intentional layback of the club. And you could just see in all the subjects here with the driver, now this is with the driver, it's going to be different with an iron, that these angles between the hands and the club head and the direction of the linear force applied to the grip point are very very close to moving on similar uh, planes when they come around. Like you could see as I take this bottom part and I start to spin it you could see, let me just move this over see if I can get this at the perfect angle for you so as we lay this one down, you could see the club heads, the plane of the force, and how the club head comes around. And you could see early on, because this golfer laid the club back in the at the end of their backswing, you could see the relative angle between the two starts to come closer together as he comes down, as this particular golfer comes down. And one of the videos that we were talking about on our Facebook group, Postmodern Golf, was the suggestion was to have the red hub path, the angle of this, and the club at standing, let's say a practice drill where you take the club shaft and the head and you put it at the same angle as the hub path and you keep it straight up and down. And then as you come down, you try to take the club and 
lay it back as you come down. And that was the suggestion. By this point in the downswing, I think you're going to see more of the club head and the angle between the hub path come closer together. So this is our most extreme case of the golfer laying the club down. He did it not so much um, by using a, a, a torquing of the club back or anything like that. And when we look at the grip and where the linear force at the grip point is, we could see how it interacts with the club. This is a cool way for you to see this. So I figured I would share it. And we have it the whole swing broken down into quadrants. And we are able to show you all these different little things. So it's a cool analysis. Hope you enjoyed.